What is up, Element Youth? Yes, yes, I love it. So good to have you guys here tonight. Well, we're going to play a game here in a minute as soon as we go find our props to play the game here. Hold on a second. I think I need four volunteers. Four? Four? Yeah, you. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yes, you. What do I got? Four volunteers. I didn't call you. Did I? Oh, I did call. I didn't call you. <laughs> come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Uh, where's my? Where's my? I got three from over there. I got to get one from over here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. You. No. You. Hey. You. Yeah. You. Right there. Right there. I'm digging the outfit. Ooh. Do we not have balloons? We don't have balloons, so we're going to have to make something up. All right. Hang tight. Is there Pastor Jeff out there? Pastor Jeff? Pastor Jeff? Uh, Pastor Jeff? All right. I'm just going to find random objects in the back we can play with here. Let's uh, do that. <laughs> All right, I got it, Jeremiah. I got it. I got Perfect. it. Perfect. This, this is, is going to be, be really great. interesting. All right, so <laughs> we – have you guys ever done a three-legged race? Don't look at me like that. Three-legged races are fun. You know, so they don't we're going to have a three-legged race with these random objects. So you and your partner, Bowden, come here. Oh, yeah. Are going to come here. And put this up against right you guys. Left. You have to oh. walk together and keep it closed in. <laughs> you have to go down and back three down times. And back. Down and back. All right. You guys got it? So you two versus you two. Is that cool? Can we handle that? Oh, we got. We got balls now. So you're going to use these balls to do that. All right, that makes things a little easier. All right, you two are on a team. What's your name? Hope, Hope and? Jack. And Jack. Hope and Jack. Perfect. What's your guys' names? Bree. Bree and? Liz. All right. I love it, Liz. I love it. Do you got everything you need? Everything we need. So teams, come All over right. here. You two are on a team. Jack and Hope, head on down that way. You're going to walk down here. Drop the ball. Come back. with the Get the other ball. Walk down. Huh? Sure. It's a three-legged race. You have to have the balloon between the two of you, ball between the two of you guys, and walk down the whole time. If you drop it, you go back or stop and get it. Ready? Can I get a timer or something like that? Take a step, uh, take a step up. All right, are you ready? Yes, three, is. two, go. Go. Yes, that nice, way. Yes, nice. Yes. There we go. There if we go. Falls, there we go. Keep it, it up. Keep it up. Keep going. There, there you go. go. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, got got it. It. Put it back it on. Put it back on. Put it back no, on. Good. Go. Go. Go, back. Go. go back. Go back. Go back. That's one. They got one, right? Uh, you yeah, got to come in here. I made a lot right here. Yeah. Yeah. One. And then. Go, go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're doing great. Come on. Come on. Doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Get the other one. Go back. Go back. Go back. You're good. Go get the other one. There you go. Come on, come on, walk, 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 walk. You guys got it, doing great, doing great. It's one to one, one to one. Keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. All right, drop it, get the other one, go get the other one, go get the other one, go, 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 go. That's two, two for hope. It's two to one, go, 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 Two to two. Two to this two. Is it. Two to go, two. Go, 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 go. Next point will win it. The it's ladies over. with the win. Nice job. Good job. All right. Very good. Everybody, can, I'll get some candy for you guys after service. Come find me nice after job, service. Nice job, nice job. Open Jack, good job, guys. I got some candy after service. Come find me. We'll get you some candy. Wow, Let's give it up for our contestants. Yes. What a very fun, well-planned-out game that was. That was awesome. So, who's ready for worship? Well, before worship, we're going to hit a, see an expectation videos. And then after that, make, get your hearts and minds ready for worship. Let's have a great night tonight. Bumper video.
Hello and welcome to EY. My name is Wes, and in order to make your Wednesday night experience as best as possible, we need to go over some things. Students at EY are expected to conduct themselves in a respectful and suitable manner. The following are guidelines to help you understand what is expected here. First things first, we would like you to show respect and keep a good attitude to adults, students, and property. Number two, no tobacco, drugs, alcohol, vapes, or any weapons of any kind. That includes pepper spray, firearms, knives, brass knuckles, grenades, TNT, flamethrowers, ninja stars, nunchucks, or shivs allowed on the premises. Seriously? Do you really need a grenade? Really? Number three, please, please, no PDA. Also known as public display of affection. Or if you're a middle schooler out there, I simply mean don't be passing your cooties around to your new girlfriend or boyfriend, all right? Just keep your hands to yourself. Number four, no excessive dangerous roughhousing or horseplay. Number five, do not leave the building without a parent or guardian's consent. Number six, refrain from using offensive language, such as vulgarity, racial slurs, or the use of the Lord's name in vain. Hey man, can you help us clean up our We had a spill. Dude, what's wrong? All he said was Do you have a problem with the word? Bro, we're not swearing. All we're saying is Dude, there's nothing wrong with saying Oh my gosh, all I'm saying is Number seven, no sexual misconduct or harassment will be tolerated. Number eight, no speeding or dangerous driving in the parking lot. That includes them. Number nine, no fighting. This means Wednesday is not the fight club. We don't talk about the fight club, but we also don't participate in the fight club. Number 10, no book bags, or outside food or drinks past the check-in area. We made this rule video in a funny and lighthearted way, but we want you to take these rules seriously, not only for your safety, but so that you can have the best experience here this Wednesday night. What's up everybody? We are so happy you are joining us tonight. Just a real quick house moment. We are getting ready to enter into a time of worshiping our heavenly creator. That's God and Jesus. So we've got a bunch of... Hmm. Thanks, Pastor Jeff. So we got a bunch of volunteers that spend a lot of time during the week to prepare and, and get you guys ready for worship and the message. So please, we just ask that you show some respect to the worship band, to the people bringing the message, and to yourselves and God. Because if you guys don't, we got volunteers that are going to pull you out of your seats and embarrass you in front of your friends, and we don't want that to happen either. So guys, please, just behave a little bit. We love you. Get ready for some awesome worship. What's up, Element Church? How we doing tonight? All right. Why don't you put your hands together? We're going to worship the king this evening. We're going to have a good time tonight. Let's go. Come on now. Can I sing this? I throw my hands to the sky and I feel so alive and I want to give you praise. I throw my hands to the sky and I feel so alive. Never felt so good, cause your joy is overwhelming, it's running right through my veins, and in your love, I found all that I needed, I'm never gonna give it up, sing it out, my response will always be to praise,
constancy lord when we live in a world that's just chaos sometimes and a country that's ever changing and a world that's ever changing god you remain the same forever and ever yesterday today and tomorrow the bible says that you love us as far as the east is from the west god and we know that's never ending and we thank you for that tonight lord I pray over the students and, and the speaker tonight, Lord, that, that just what he has to say just really, really touches their hearts tonight, God, and that, that something just like hits tonight, God, for them, and they begin to understand you more and know you more and love you more, God. Thank you so much for this opportunity to come and praise you. It is in your heavenly name we pray, amen. You can be seated. <laughs> All right, at this time, we're gonna continue worshiping God with our tithes and our offerings. And this is a part of service where we can actually physically 
give back to God just a little bit of what he has already given us because we know that God has given us everything that is good. So know this, every time that you give of your tithes and offerings up here, it goes to reaching students that may not know the name of Jesus Christ because ultimately we want to see those people that don't know Jesus up in heaven and your tithes and offering help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. So as we prepare to give, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for blessing us with everything that we have. God, we ask that you use this offering to spread the name of Jesus around our schools, our city, our state, our country, and the world, God. We ask that you use us to be a light in these dark times, and we ask that you bless the giver and the gift. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we got an exciting night tonight. We have a guest speaker. I'm so excited because he hasn't preached in a while, and I know he's going to be bringing an amazing message. So we need you to pay attention, lean in, take some good notes, and let's give all of our attention to Chris Clymer. How you guys doing? You guys doing good? I'm excited to be here. It's been 23 years since I've done something like this. I, see, I was a junior and high, senior in high school, something like that, and I was telling kids to take all of my money. So I'm not doing that today, though. All right, but we're going to have a little fun here to start. Um, actually, I'm going to have some fun. You guys may not enjoy what's about to happen as much as I am. I'm going to ruin movies for you guys and TV shows. So can we put up that, that, the story arc slide for me real quick? Hopefully we have that. I think we have it. Come on. We got to have it. I need it. Nope. What? You've, Jeffrey? First there's no balloons. <laughs> Jeffrey. Okay, anyways, all right, so... I'm going to tell you, so movies and TV shows, they all follow the same formula, okay? It's called the story arc, all right? So imagine it's this and it comes down, right? So right here is where they introduce all of your characters, right? Yeah, this is, this is Frozen, right? This is the two princesses. One, they want to build a snowman, things like that, right? Yep, Anna and Elsa, thank you. Then, then, look. Then, right about here where it starts to arc up, something happens. It's called an inciting incident. That's what gets the story going, right? So in Frozen, well, I don't want to give it away because I want to give you guys a chance to stump me. So you start doing your arc all the way up, and then at the tippy top of your story, there you go. You've got a rising action. So right at the top, something's going to happen. Yep. Now, at your climax, it's going to tell you, ah, there we go. So, hold on. Before we get to the climax, you got your crisis. So, so the crisis is what tells you, what tells your hero whether or not you're going to fight or you're going to flight. Right? That crisis is what's going to determine if the movie's going to be done with pretty soon or if they're going to continue on. Then we get to the climax. That's where the big battle scenes usually happen. And then we fall down and we resolve everything. So don't yell it all out right now, but I'm going to try to prove this point real quickly. So all movies and all TV shows have this formula. So when you watch movies now and you watch TV shows, you're just going to watch them a little bit differently. I want to hear one or two people's favorite movie, and I'm going to walk through this real quick. No. What would you say? Scream? I don't know that movie yet. Well, no. Waterboy? That's it. I don't know that movie. What? Spider-Man, which one? We'll just do original Spider-Man. Okay, so Spider-Man. We're going to talk about Spider-Man real quick. All right, so that first part, what are we doing? We're learning who Peter Parker is, right? We're learning that he's got, he doesn't have any parents, right? It's kind of sad, he doesn't have any parents. He's living with his aunt and his uncle. Um, we're learning that he's in high school. Then what do we think the inciting incident is for Spider-Man? <laughs> sort of. Uh, so it is he gets bit by a spider, but that, the inciting incident 
is, is, yes, he gets bit by the spider, but Uncle Ben dies. Okay? So now Uncle Ben starts, die, he dies. Now we're going to go through this whole story of how he has to learn to be the spider to save. Because, you know, with more power comes. There we go. Okay, so what do we think the crisis is? Right? So we got someone destroying the city. We got someone destroying the world. Right? What's the climax? What's where he's got to, he's got to determine? Right. He finds out he's Spider-Man, right? So now they've got to fight each other. Right? And now we're going to come down because Spider-Man wins. Right? Then we, we resolve. He gets the girl. Right? The guys always get the girl. No, the girls get the prince. So, yeah, so now you guys will never be able to watch a movie and be surprised anymore. Like, this literally happens, even in Hannah, Montana, this exact same thing happens. That's my daughter's favorite show. <laughs> All right, so, real quick, now that I've had some fun, we're going to talk about what is a story, right? So, a story is an account of past events in someone's life or in the evolution of something. That is one definition. The other definition is it's a made-up movie, it's a made-up book, it's a made-up story. But we're going to focus on this one. We're going to focus on story as an account of past events in someone's life or in the evolution of something. Real-life stories, your stories are always evolving. We don't really have a climax in our life. We really don't have this falling action. Our resolution is we die, right? That's our resolution, right? And even after that, some of us might have a happy resolution. Some of us may not have a very happy resolution, heaven or hell. So let me give you guys a real life example of a story. I'm gonna give you guys my testimony. So my testimony starts when I was in eighth grade and my parents got divorced. In fact, my mom sent me away to my aunt's house in California for spring break so that she can kick my dad out of our house. So when I came home, my mom opened up the garage door and my dad's car was gone, right? So I go, hey, mom, where's dad? Hey, I kicked him out, we're no longer together. 14 is when I gave my life to Christ. I was actually invited by my best friend to youth group and then I was invited to go on a missions trip, okay? This is where God actually intervened in my life for the first time. I was, we were painting, we were just helping spruce up. It was in Paducah, Kentucky. I don't know why that name is so funny, but it sounds funny to me. It's Paducah, Kentucky. I will never forget it. We were painting what they call our corn cribs. And basically what that is is a barn for corn. Um, but yeah, it was painting a corn crib. And I am actually deathly afraid of heights. Like I'm even afraid right now to fall standing over because it's a long way. Six foot four, six feet, it's fall. It's far, it's far. So I was 20 feet up in the air, I had my ladder, I was walking up the paint, and I froze halfway up the ladder. I didn't move. Next thing I noticed was another ladder come up, and a leader, a youth leader, walk up to me and go, what's going on? Are you okay? And I said, I am deathly afraid right now. He prayed over me, I had calmness, I gave my life to Christ in that moment, and for that whole week, I was painting corn cribs 20 feet up in the air, not even realizing it. When I was 17, I started struggling in high school. I actually ran away from home um, for a good week or so. Now, when I say I ran away from home, I actually just went and hung out at my friend's house, and I just said, hey, look, if my dad calls, don't answer. Um, I barely passed high school. I struggled so hard in high school that I actually had to take extra classes during the school and through the summer just so that I can pass high school. After high school, I joined the military. I was in the Air Force for six years. After I got out of the Air Force, it, I felt like I had just gotten out of high school again. I had no skills. I had nothing. The only thing I knew how to do was work on a $20 million F-16, and people in the private sector don't own those things. So I struggled to keep a job, to find a job, take care of my family, so much so that one day I decided to leave my family to join the Army. But the way I wrote how I was leaving my family, my dad took it as I was going to commit suicide. 
So I left and I drove forever. No one knew where I was. My family called the, the state police and said, hey, look, this person is missing. We think he's going to harm himself. They put an APB out for me, an all points bulletin. When I showed up back at my house, the police were there. My dad was there. My wife was there. And then my wife's local pastor was there. And God intervened again in my life. The pastor there told me a few things that I can't repeat here. That meant a lot to me. But he also talked to me about developing my talents, developing my purpose, and developing my story. How God used me. So I started going to college. I actually disliked school very, very much. I actually wanted to be a pastor when I was going through school in high school, right? In my graduation photo, it said, Chris wants to be a pastor when he gets out of school. Well, that didn't happen because I didn't like school whatsoever. Um, like I said, I barely passed. But as this pastor and even as this local church was loving on me and I had a family, now my in-laws, my family was the family that I never had. So they were showing me support, they were loving on me, and they're like, you can do it. So I started to go to college to be a lawyer. I love the idea of putting things together and either telling someone is wrong or telling someone is right. I vividly remember another time where God intervened, but this time it wasn't through anyone other than him talking directly to me. I remember I was on campus and at this time, I had started dabbling in doing video work and telling stories and things like that. And I had this, I vividly remember God said to me, Chris, you don't have to be a pulpit preacher to spread the gospel. You don't. Right? And this is going to come into play a little bit later on. All you have to do is use the gifts that I have given you to help spread the gospel. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So why did I tell you all this? Why did I tell you my story? Why does it even matter? It matters. And we see that in Acts 1.8 and why our stories matter. Acts 1.8 says, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When you give your life to Christ, we become a living and breathing example of the gospel. We were dead in ourselves and now are alive in him. We are called to be witnesses, and how we do that is by telling our story. It's about evolving our story to our current situations, right? Even if you look in my story, right, I had a bunch of ups, I had a bunch of downs, I was over here, I was over there, God intervened, God intervened. You guys are a little young, right? But God is intervening, you have ups and downs. Remember these moments, right? It's not about being perfect, but... When you are in your downs, remember, God is not done with you. Psalms 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It is in our valleys that we can grow and evolve our story. When we are in our valley, we can think our story is done, but it's not. I want to, I want to let you know, we are the best evidence that God exists and he loves us. He loves us so much, he sent his son to die for us, right? So here's, our, here's the thing. Even in the Bible, right, the Bible is not trying to oversimplify it. It's a bunch of stories. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, when you read it, he's just sharing his experiences, right? In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he writes, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ, right? It's just telling our story. Paul... If any of you remember, his life was not sunshine and roses, right? He's getting shipwrecked. He's getting bitten by snakes. He's thrown in jail, right? Like all he did, though, was tell us what he went through. His story helps us to understand who Jesus is and how we should act as believers in Jesus. Your story matters because someone else's eternity could be at hand. So how do I tell my story? You guys are probably wondering, looking at it. Don't let that statement that I just said scare you, right? Someone else's eternity is at hand. Don't let that scare you. Telling your story doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to be a preacher. I mean, look at me, I'm barely getting through this. But I'm hoping that someone hears my story when I tell it to whoever. Some of these people that I work with are 
hearing my story for the first time, they're probably going, oh, that makes sense now. I understand Chris just a little bit better, right? I'm hoping someone hears my story and sees that living a life for Jesus isn't always perfect, but it's always evolving. This is my story in a nutshell. And as long as I tell that, I can have an impact. Don't worry, tell you about the story about the perfect life. You are just telling your story and how God has impacted your life. I'm going to tell you something real quick. God impacted my life today. You want to know how? I woke up. I woke up. I can tell that to someone right now, and I'll be like, hey, I woke up today because of God. Don't worry about being judged how much Bible you know. It's not about that. It's just about telling your friend, telling someone, a stranger, this is what God has done in my life. I know three times in my life vividly where God has intervened for me. And then I can tell you that. And here's the best part. No one can argue your story. It's your story. It happened to you. Right? We can, we can argue Bible. We can argue this. We can argue that. But if you go to someone and said, this is what Jesus did in my life, there is nothing they can say that will prove you wrong. Be confident that your story is who you are. Now some of you are thinking, Chris, I'm not good at speaking. I'm not good at telling stories. It's not what I do. I'm going to go, all right, we're going to look at Moses. Moses let his actions speak louder than words. So Exodus 4.10 and 17. So Exodus 4.10, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Right? Verse 17 then says, but take this staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. Real quickly, between 10 and 7, verse 10 and 17, God tells Moses, I'm going to take that excuse away from you and I'm going I'm to let your brother Aaron speak for you. So God's going to tell Moses Moses is going to tell Aaron. Aaron is going to tell everybody else. Moses gets the fun job of standing there with his staff and doing the cool thing. Right? But the staff in the water is going to turn red. Moses didn't have to talk. Now, he talked. Right? But when it came time, Aaron did the talking for him. Moses did the action. God took care of the rest. Use your talents. Your talents are a valuable way of telling your story. Use your social media. How do you appear on social media? Are you kissing everything in sight? Right? Like, I don't, I don't understand the fish, the fish lips. I don't like, what are you guys kissing? But use your social media. Be mindful how you appear. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun or dress the current trends. Just be mindful of the image you are putting out there. Just simply being aware of how you're preparing and presenting yourself to the world will speak volumes. It's moments like now. Just being an example can sometimes speak louder than our words, right? I would say this, you guys are doing an amazing job and I appreciate all the respect you are showing me right now. That speaks louder than any words, right? If you guys are sitting there talking about, I'm a this, I'm a that, Jesus did this, Jesus is that, but you come in here and you just talk and you chit chat, and you're not paying attention, your friends are gonna see that. Right? If you say things here, but then you go out there and you do something completely different, your story that you tried to talk to them about just got blown up because your actions were not showing it. The best example of Jesus' impacted life is a changed life. Even if you don't see change right away, don't worry, you are. Small, consistent changes will make a huge impact, not only in your life, but also in the lives around you. This is why telling your story matters. Someone else's eternity could be at hand. Remember, we aren't movies. We aren't made up stories. We are always evolving, and we all, have, all we have is to tell people or show people how God is always evolving our story. Thank you guys so much for the respect and the, and the care that you have given me. Remember, you guys are a valuable piece to spreading the gospel from one side of the earth to the other.
Thanks. All right, real quick. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to wrap this up real quick. Each and every one of us in here every day is writing the story of our life. And some of us are writing the story with God. And some of us are writing the story of our life without God. And I can tell you, writing a story of your life without God, it can be good. But there can be bad times. And when you fall down in those bad times, you have nothing to lean on. It can be a terrifying, scary place. And maybe right now you're in here and you heard Chris speaking tonight and you want to change the way your story is going. You want to know more about God. You want to know more about this Jesus that came to die for your sins. And you can do that in just a minute by accepting him with a simple prayer. And we'll give you that opportunity here in just a second. Or maybe you're in here and your story started off great and it was started with God and everything was going great. And then something happened, something came and, and knocked your story off the path. And for whatever reason, you fell away from God. In just a second, you can come back into the loving arms of Jesus by saying this prayer with us. So please, if, if you're in here tonight and you want to say that prayer, if you want to invite God back into your life or you've fallen away from God and Jesus and you want to come back, we encourage you, pray this prayer with us. We're all going to join in and pray it with you, but you can accept God back into your life or for the first time by simply saying his prayer. Everybody, let's repeat after me and show support for these folks making that decision. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son to die for my sins. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I believe he is the son of God. He came to earth, he died on the cross, and rose from the dead, and is seated at your right hand. Please come walk with me the rest of my days of my life. And as we all said in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> all right, all right. Awesome, awesome. Jeremiah, where are you at? What you got? What is up? So, hey, I have a few announcements, and then we can get out of here. Uh... First, if you've made that decision for the first time, uh, text DECIDED to 55498 right there. Or you can use that uh, your phone to get that, uh, I think it's called a QR code. Uh, and that will help you there. So if you made that decision, awesome. Make that text so we can send you some things, give you some help to, make the, to follow that path and that decision you made. Be right back. Ready for youth camp? Let's go! All right, youth camp is red team. Let's go, red team! Registration for youth camp ends Friday, so make sure if you're gonna go, you register. Talk to your parents, like mom, dad. Have you registered me for youth camp yet? So make sure that happens. Friday is the deadline. And we have a new series coming up. If we can pay attention to the video on the screen real quick. That's right, At The Movies is back, starting next week. Last announcement, starting next week, we are doing combined services. Combined services, high school, middle schools, together holding hands as one, it's gonna be awesome. There won't be any handheld, there will be no handholding. But all right, thank you guys so much for coming, thank you for being so respectful, have a great night.
Hello and welcome to EY. My name is Wes, and in order to make your Wednesday night experience as best as possible, we need to go over some things. Students at EY are expected to conduct themselves in a respectful and suitable manner. The following are guidelines to help you understand what is expected here. First things first, we would like you to show respect and keep a good attitude to adults, students, and property. Number two, no tobacco, drugs, alcohol, vapes, or any weapons of any kind. That includes pepper spray, firearms, knives, brass knuckles, grenades, TNT, flamethrowers, ninja stars, nunchucks, or shivs allowed on the premises. Seriously? Do you really need a grenade? Really? Number three, please, please, no PDA. Also known as public display of affection. Or if you're a middle schooler out there, I simply mean don't be passing your cooties around to your new girlfriend or boyfriend, all right? Just keep your hands to yourself. Number four, no excessive, dangerous, roughhousing, or horseplay. Number five, do not leave the building without a parent or guardian's consent. Number six, refrain from using offensive language, such as vulgarity, racial slurs, or the use of the Lord's name in vain. Hey man, can you help us clean up our We had a spill. Dude, what's wrong? All he said was Do you have a problem with the word? Bro, we're not swearing. All we're saying is Dude, there's nothing wrong with saying Oh my gosh, all I'm saying is Number seven, no sexual misconduct or harassment will be tolerated. Number eight, no speeding or dangerous driving in the parking lot. That includes them. Number nine, no fighting. This means Wednesday is not the fight club. We don't talk about the fight club, but we also don't participate in the fight club. Number 10, no book bags, or outside food or drinks past the check-in area. We made this rule video in a funny and lighthearted way, but we want you to take these rules seriously. Not only for your safety, but so that you can have the best experience here this Wednesday night. Yo, 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 what's up guys? How are y'all doing tonight? How is it going? Thanks, Logan. I love you, man. I love you. All right. This is a light crowd, man. Why aren't you guys inviting your friends? What's yeah, going what's on going here? on? Mm -hmm. Get more mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we What do we got on tap tonight, Jeremiah? We have an awesome game. We Ooh, need four people. Game. Four Four volunteers. Four I recommend volunteers. Two boys and two girls. Two boys, two girls. Okay, Levi wants to volunteer. I see it. All right. He doesn't have to. I'm, I'm gonna I think people uh, that Savannah, you want to volunteer? Has that guy played? I can't see. Has he? Played? You want to come up here and volunteer? Yeah, let's go. Come on. Yep. I need two yep. girls. All right, Logan, all the way come back. on. All right. All right. Cece uh, wants to do egg. Savannah. All right. Piper. Hey, hey, I got one one young lady right here. She All right, come on up. It. I like her hair. She got little things in it. Come on up. All right. So this game, you have ready? you guys done a three-legged race before? You've never done a three-legged race. That's when you tie your leg together and you have three legs. But this is different. Three. So instead of instead of tying your legs together, I need you. Uh, we're gonna use the uh, the the ball and walk. If it drops. Oh. If it drops, you go back to the start, all right? You got that? We're going to go this way, this way. You make it three trips. You make it. Hey, listen. You make it three trips, you win. Yep. You got to come past this line right here. You can start with any ball you want. Hey, Jeff, will you grab me some candy? All Quattro, right. Are you ready? Quattro. I wouldn't have that ball in front of you so you don't trip, but that's Logan, your Logan, you're going to trip. All right. You ready? Oh, all right. Ready. Three, two. Go! Talk to each other. Yes, uh, talk. I like the communication. No dropping. Well, no, no cursing going, on the platform. Going. You can't touch it. You can't touch it with your hands. You can't touch it with your hands. No, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. See, guys. You might want to reset. I don't know. I like keep the going, baby keep steps. Going, keep going. Baby keep going. steps. Right here. You just got to make it right here. All right, go back. Take drop it, drop it. Go back. Drop it. Drop it. Two more. Two more. Drop it. Two more. Drop it. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on. All right, all right. Let's go, let's go, let's go, ladies. Come on, guys. It's not looking good for Why the guys. Why didn't you use the knee brace knee? There's more service area. Oh, like, all right, all right. 
go, almost go, there, almost go, there, almost go, there, almost go, there. Go, All right, go, you guys can all go, go back. Go, one more. Last go, one. Last go, one. Last ball. Last ball. Go, go, go. It's neck and neck. All right, all right. Come on, oh, come on, come on. Go. They're going to oh. make it. They're going to make it. It's so close. The girls win. The girls win. Nice Let's job. Let's hear it for the ladies. Very good, very good. I said, let's hear it for the ladies! I think Woo! Beyonce would be disappointed in the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, everybody that played, Pastor Jeff is going to have some candy for y'all, maybe during service, after service, I don't know. But right now, we got an amazing bumper video for you all, so enjoy. All right, what's up, Element Church? How we doing tonight? Awesome. I'm so glad to see you guys' face. Why don't you stand your feet? We're going to worship the King this evening. All right, we're going to need your hands together. Here we go.
We are just so thankful to be in your house this evening, Lord. There's nothing better than just bringing praise to you, God. We're just so thankful for that. Lord, and in this moment, Lord, we just want to lift you up again because you're our Father. And it's so good to be able to come to your house to lift praises up to your name, to worship you, and then learn about you, Lord. And I pray that the message that we're going to hear tonight, that we just come with open hearts, open minds, Lord, and that this message that we hear will just change us from the inside out. And that when we leave these doors, we'll be different. And we'll be different to the world so that the world sees us they'll know that we have you inside us, Lord, and they can't help but find out about you. We're just so thankful again for us to be here this evening. And again, we go, and we just lift you up. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, at this time, we're going to continue worshiping God with our tithes and our offerings. And if you're a guest here with us tonight, feel no obligation to participate in this part of service. But if you do, we have a lot of easy ways you can give. You can drop your offering in the bucket as it goes around or as you leave tonight. You can text the number on the screen to give, or you can go online at elementchurch.com slash give to give up your tithes and offerings. But tonight, I just real quickly, I wanted to just help you guys realize this is the part of service where you can physically give back to God just a little bit of what he has already given you. Because we know that all good things come from our Father in heaven. And know this, that when you do give of your tithes and your offerings, that goes to spreading the name of Jesus all over the place, from your schools to the Winsville community to the whole state. So know that when you do give, your offering is being used to share the name of Jesus. So let's pray as we prepare to give. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here in your presence tonight. Thank you for everything that you bless us with. God, we ask that you use this offering to spread your son's name to everywhere that we can go and help us be a light to share his name as well. God, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver. And we all said, amen.
All right. So we have a special evening for you guys tonight. We have a guest speaker. Are you ready, guest speaker? So please give a warm welcome for Chris Clymer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's okay. It's going to be all right. I promise you. All right, before I get started real quick, I want to do a quick shout out to the Crossings from Illinois. We just want to say hello. Don't stand up. We don't want to embarrass you. We just want to say hi and welcome. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to start with that because I haven't done this for in like 23 years. And it was just very convenient for Jeff to not do this while you guys were coming to visit. All right, so last service, I didn't have this slide, but maybe Jeffrey did it this time. So we're gonna, I'm going to ruin movies for you guys real quick, movies and TV shows. This is more fun for me because I'm going to nerd out for a second. Um, but you guys, if you guys get any of this, if you grasp any of this, movies are going to just feel different to you. So every movie, every TV show does this, all right? This is basically... In a nutshell, what a movie or a TV show is, right? So our exposition, that little first chunk, they're just setting up your characters. They're just setting up all the things that are happening, the town that they live in, all the fun things. Then something really bad happens. That's called an inciting incident. So the world goes to crap. The moon is falling on the ground. His girlfriend left him, something to that effect. The princess gets kidnapped or is stuck in a tower. Then that takes you on your whole journey of a movie. Your whole movie is basically just that. It's called rising action. It's called rising action because you're rising to a climax. That crisis spot in between, that's the moment where your hero or whoever, the main character of your story, has to choose between fight or flight. It's the thing that just, are you going to run away or are you going to fight for it? Then you get to the climax that's usually the guy winning, you know, the guy gets the girl, the girl leaves the tower, all those fun things. The wedding happens, and then you just go into this fun little thing and then resolve, and it's happily ever after. Now, to prove this, I haven't planted anyone in here, so I want to hear a couple of movies. If I don't know it, I'm not going to be able to prove it, but I, I want to hear some of your favorite movies, and I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. <sighs> God, I haven't seen that in like, <laughs> like that movie is almost as old as me. Gotcha. Zootopia? Okay, great. Zootopia. All right. So in the beginning of Zootopia, what do we see, right? They talk about, they actually do the whole story in Zootopia. If you watch Zootopia, the whole movie happens within the first few minutes. The whole movie, right? So you have, you have, the, you have the carnivores, you have the, you have the other ones, what are they called? What's it? Carnivores and the Predators. <laughs> Predators and Prey, thank you. It's been a while since I've seen this movie. I thank you for the help. Right? So what do we think the inciting incident is? What's the bad thing that happens? When the predators go savage. Right. Right? So this bad thing happens. Now, another little bit small inciting incident is when she goes off to the sea. She actually becomes a police officer. Right? She runs off to the sea. So now we're going to go through this long story, right? I need you to write 100 tickets. I'm going to write 101. Then we go through that, right? She, she meets the guy, the sloth. How are you today? Right? Yeah. So what's the crisis? What do we think the crisis is? Oh, the moment they go out of the bridge. When they find out that the sheep is the bad guy. Well, yes, but like, but, <laughs> yes, yes, right? But it's also, right, it's that moment, but it's also the moment where, oh my gosh, Bunny, Officer Hops, destroys the fox's understanding of him, right? So now she has to fight or flight for this friendship. She has to fight or flight, and really, when she wins the friendship, she actually wins the city, right? That's the climax, Right? They fake the person out with the blueberries. It's really not blueberries. Or it is blueberries. It's not the, the weird stuff. And then we go into all this little fun stuff. They have the dance. The cheetah and the, the police chief start dancing to the Shakira song. It's all fun stuff. And then we resolve. And basically the resolve is just we live happily ever after. So what you just saw there in a nutshell is a story. 
Every TV show, every movie does that, even Stranger Things. Stranger Things does that. But what is a story? A story is simply an account of a past event in someone's life or in the evolution of something. That's one. There's another definition, which is basically what movies are, making things up. That's a story. But we're going to focus on this definition as it is an account of past events in someone's life or in the evolution of something. Real life stories, your stories are always evolving. We don't really have a climax in our life and then results into a falling action. Our resolution is us in the ground. And then a little bit later, you're either in heaven or you're in hell. We don't get the fun little, let's have the wedding, let's have this thing. We all lived happily ever after. Let me give you an example of a real life story. Let me show you my story. My story started when I was in eighth grade when I, when I found out my parents were getting divorced. I don't know how many of you found out or who have divorced parents and how you found out, but let me tell you how I found out. My mom sent me away to my aunt's house in California. They started this tradition about four years earlier. I would go to my aunt's house for spring break. I would have fun with them. It was in California. They owned a horse breeding, so, like, they bred racehorses, so it was just kind of a lot of fun. Didn't think anything of it. My eighth grade year, I came home from spring break. My mom opened up the garage door, and my dad's car was gone. And this is how she told me. I told your dad to leave. I didn't want him here anymore. Okay. I just came back from spring break. Now, God intervenes in my life at 14. My friend invited me to youth group, and then he invited me to a mission trip, like a local mission trip. We went to Paducah, Kentucky. That is the weirdest sounding name of a town that I've ever said or been a part of. It's Paducah. Paducah, Kentucky. We were there just basically helping spruce things up, painting barns, houses, cleaning things out, making wheelchair ramps. But I vividly remember when God intervened in my life. I am deathly afraid of heights. Even at six foot four, I'm afraid to fall from standing still because it's that far down to the ground. I was up on a 20 foot ladder painting a corn crib, which is basically a bedroom for corn, but it's really just a barn. As I was going up the ladder, I froze about halfway up. I stood there, had no clue what was going on. What I saw next was another ladder come up and a leader come up to where I was and go, are you okay? And I said, no. He prayed over me. I gave my life to Christ right then and there. And I was able to paint barns 20 feet up in the air without ever thinking about it. Understanding that someone was there for me. When I was 17, I ran away from home. Now, when I say I ran away from home, I went and hung out at my friend's house. And I simply just said, if my dad calls, don't answer. I stayed away for a couple of weeks. I barely passed high school. Um, I had to take extra classes during school and throughout the summer just to pass high school. Out of high school, I joined the military. I joined the Air Force for six years. After the military, I went into a very dark depression in my life. I didn't have a job. I had a family. I had my first child. Didn't know what I wanted to do. Basically because when I got out of the military, I was basically like I had just graduated high school. I had no skills. I had no nothing. I knew how to work on F-16s, but, you know, private people don't own $20 million planes. I was in such a dark depression that I actually wrote a letter to my father. It was an email asking him to take care of my family. I was actually going to leave my family to go join the military or do something. I did not feel qualified to take care of my family. Now, the way I wrote this letter, this email to my dad, it made it sound like I was going to commit suicide. So they called the highway patrol because I had told them that I had told my family that I was going to look for a job or something. I don't remember, but I got myself out of the house and I didn't come back and no one heard from me. By the time I came home, the police were there. My family was there. And I say my family, it was my new family. It was my in-laws. And my in-laws' family is the exact opposite of my family, like my true family. They were there, and the local pastor was there. And this is where God intervened in my life again. The pastor came and talked to me about purpose. He started talking to me about my gifts. He started about telling me how to develop my talents and my gifts. 
So much so, I started going to college. I told myself I wasn't going to school anymore. I hated school, absolutely hated school. But I started going to school to be a lawyer, but at the same time, I was learning how to do video work. And I remember again God coming into my life and setting me on my path. I was walking from one class to another on campus, and this is the only time that I can remember in my life as of right now, as a 41-year-old person who has bad memory, where God didn't use someone else. He actually spoke to me and said, Chris, you don't have to be a pulpit preacher to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is not the only way. I said, he said, use your talents. You're developing some talents to help people tell their story. Use that. So then I switched from being a lawyer pre-law to film school. And for the past 15 years now, I have been working for local churches and local organizations, helping them tell their story and what God has done for them. But why does the story even matter? Why does my story matter? Why does your story matter? Well, we're going to see why here in Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When you give your life to Christ, we become a living and breathing example of the gospel. We were dead in ourselves, and now we're alive in him. We are called to be witnesses, and how we do that is by telling our story. It's about always evolving our story with our current situations. If you see it in my story, I had tons of ups and downs. I ran away from home. I ran away. One little thing that I didn't tell you guys was when I was in the military, I, I didn't go to church at all. I came up with as many excuses to tell my wife. I don't want to go to church. I don't know how many times I was sick, but I wasn't really sick. I know. Now I can't use them anymore. She's like, I already heard that one before. <laughs> it's always about the story. I will. I, can, I got good ones. You're going to have ups and downs. But remember this. When you're in your downs, God is still with you. Psalms 23, 4, we all know this one. Even though I walk through the darkest, darkest valley, I will feel no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they come for me. It is in our valleys that we can grow and evolve our story. When we are in our valleys, we can think our story is done, but it's not. We are the best evidence that God exists and God loves us. He loved us so much, he sent his only son to die for us. Paul, the person who wrote most of the New Testament, at a very surface level thing, if you look at what he wrote, he's just telling you his experiences, right? In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says this, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Paul's life, if any of you know anything about Paul, it wasn't fun. It was not all sunshine and roses. He was bitten by snakes. He was in jail. Pretty sure he crashed in a ship. Like it was not fun, but he took those experiences and he showed us how Christ was always there for him. Your story matters because someone else's eternity could be at hand. I know that's a pretty heavy statement. Don't let that statement scare you. Telling your story doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to be a preacher. I mean, look at me, I'm barely getting through this. But I'm, I'm hoping that as I tell my story, someone else will hear it and they will see that living a life for Christ isn't always perfect, but it's always evolving. That is my story in a nutshell. And as long as I tell that, I can have impact. Again, don't worry about telling the perfect story. You're just telling your story and how God has impacted your life. It's just a conversation with a friend. Don't worry about being judged how much Bible you know. And here's the really cool thing about your story. No one can argue it. No one can tell you it's not true. You can't. Now, they can't argue Bible with you. They can do all that stuff. But if you just go, here's how God has impacted my life, they cannot argue with it. Now, some of you are thinking, Chris, I don't, I'm not good talking. I don't like to be in crowds. You're very much like me. You would like to just sit in a room, watch TV, and hope no one comes and bothers you. I want to give you an example of Moses. So in Exodus 4, 10 and 17, and I'll kind of fill in 10 and 17 quickly. So 4, 10, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. 
I am slow of speech and tongue. 17, but take this staff in your hand, this is God talking to Moses, but take this staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. So in between verse 10 and 17, basically what happens is God tells Moses, we're going to use Aaron to do all the talking. And all I really need you to do is stand there and do the cool thing with your staff. Part, put blood in the water, right? Make the frogs come. We don't have to always talk. We can use our talents, right? Just the other week, I was talking with my daughter about how she can use her talents for photography. We were discussing how we can use our talents to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ across the world as we are commanded to in Acts 1.8. Use your social media. How do you appear on social? Be mindful of how you appear. Not, now, I'm not saying you can't you know, be cool and dress all you know, the trends and things like that, but just be mindful. Be completely mindful. In moments like now, moments just like this, just be an example can sometimes be louder than the words we say. If you guys are talking all the cool stuff and being like, God, yes, God, 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 but you're going out there in the lobby and you're doing something completely different or you're going out to your high schools and you're doing something completely different, everything that you just said went away. When you're on your team, you can be a leader. When you're at your schools, you can be a leader. You can be a Christian by simply just telling people who you are by the actions that you do. The best example of an impacted life by Jesus is a changed life. Even if you don't see the change right away, don't worry. They're coming. Small, consistent changes will make a huge impact not only in your life, but also in the lives around you. This is why telling your story matters. Again, someone else's eternity could be at hand. Again, we're not movies. We're not stories. Right? We're not made up. Our lives are always changing. They're always evolving. God is always evolving our stories. Remember, your actions will speak louder than words. Who you are in here and who you are out there is telling everybody who Jesus is. Let me pray. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for the students that came today. I pray that you give them courage to stand up for you and for themselves as they are spreading your gospel from the end of the earth to the end of the earth. I pray that you give them strength. I pray that you give them peace. I pray that you show them the hope that you have shown me and you have shown countless others. Thank you for waking us up and giving us the opportunity to live one more day for you. In your name, amen. Thank you, guys. Great job, Chris. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to continue closing. So with every head bowed, every eye closed real quick. Every one of us in here is writing a story, a story of our life. And, and some of us, we are writing that story with God. And some of us were writing that story without God. And some of us, we started our story with God and we've walked away from him. And you might be here tonight and you're thinking, man, what Chris just said really struck a note in my heart. And I, I, I really want to try writing my story with God. I want to see what this life is like to be with God. And we'll give you an opportunity to do that in just a second. Or maybe you're in here tonight and your story started off great. It was going in the right direction and something happened. Something bumped your story off its path and you've fallen away from God. In just a second, you can come back to God by simply saying this prayer. So right now, if that's you, if you're in here tonight and you want to start writing your story with God or you want to come back to God, all you have to do is simply say this prayer. And we're going to say this prayer with you. So everyone in here, let's repeat this prayer with those making that decision. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son to die for my sins. We know Jesus as your son. You sent him to earth to die on the cross and raise from the dead. And he is seated at your right hand. God, we make you the Lord of our lives. Jesus, walk with me the rest of my life. And we all said, amen. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I think Jeremiah is coming out with some announcements. What is Peace. up, guys and gals? I have a few announcements for you. Uh, and then we'll get out of here. 
Uh, first, if you made that decision for the very first time or we are so happy for you, we're so proud of you, can you just text DECIDED to 55498? That's DECIDED to 55498. Should be coming on the screen with the QR code. Maybe? No? There we go. So if you guys can make that, just text that there. We're going to give you tools and things to help you on that, to start that journey in Christ. So next announcement. I'll, I'll be right back. Who's ready for youth camp? Woo! Red team, red team, red team, red team. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The last day for youth camp registration is Friday. So if you haven't registered, make sure you register before Friday. Tell your, ask your parents, Mom, Dad, am I registered for, for youth camp? They say no. Be like, I need to get registered. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have fun every year. I've been an overnight leader for the last two years, three years, and it's been a lot of fun. So you should definitely do that. And we have a video coming up uh, that's going to tell us a little bit about our next series. So if you guys can hit that video for me. That is right, at the movies is back, let's go! So our next series is at the movies, you guys are familiar with it, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And my last announcement, it's very important for you guys, especially you Piper. This summer, all summer long, we'll be, we will be doing combined services with middle school. So services will start at seven, there'll be one service. So if you come in late like Piper, Make sure you're here for the service. <laughs> I'm just picking you, Piper. I love you so much. But just make sure you're here on time so you don't miss the service. It's going to be a lot of fun. And have a great day and a great week and enjoy your summer. We love you. Be safe. We got last place. It was brutal. Red team got last. Troubles come surround. I was lost, now I'm found. I could.